Psalm. Chapter number 7, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me, lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces while there is none to deliver. O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there be any iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, yea, I have delivered him that without cause is mine enemy, let the enemy persecute my soul and take it. Yea, let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay my honor in the dust, Selah. Arise, O Lord, in thine anger, Lift up thyself because of the rage of mine enemies, and awake for me to the judgment that thou hast commanded. Let's pray. Our Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the good testimonies. Lord, we thank you to be able to be in your house on this Wednesday evening. Uh, Lord, we realize as we have assembled here tonight that none of us are exempt from problems. We certainly aren't exempt from our enemy, our adversary, the sorry no good devil, who would like nothing better than to rend us and tear us. And Lord, we know the only thing that keeps him from doing so is the grace of God. Now, Father, as we come this evening, we come seeking your face, desiring to be helped of God. Lord, you know our downsitting, our uprising, Lord, you know what we have faced, what we are facing, and what we are yet to face. So, Father, I pray that you'd insulate us. I pray that, Lord, you would help us. I pray you would enlighten us, and I pray that you would strengthen us. Now, Father, meet every need of every heart. Help us, Lord, do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Lord, we need you, and, Lord, we desire you to do something special in our midst tonight. Help us tonight, we pray, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we ask these things. Amen and amen. I want to show you several things as a way of introduction. <coughs> Excuse me, there's something up here bothering my throat. I think it's Clint's aftershave. I don't know what it is. There's something up here. <coughs> oh, it said it wasn't him. He don't wear any. Oh, so anyway... Sorry, no good devil, don't want you to hear what we have for you tonight. But I want you to notice a few things. I want you to notice, first of all, <coughs> the psalmist's reliance. Look what he said in verse number 1 again. O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. It would be a great day in your life when that verse, that phrase becomes reality to your heart. Not, Lord, in the Internet will I put the trust. Not in what WebMD says. Not even what the doctor says. Uh, doctors are good. They're instruments. Uh, but I remind you, doctors are not the final authority. I remind you a couple years ago that the doctor told Miss Annette for me not to get uh, a, a, a biopsy of what was going on in my throat that I didn't meet any of the measures it'd be a waste of money my dear friends if we'd have took that advice uh, then tonight I might not even be here uh, what I'm telling you is you can't put your trust in what doctor says uh, can't put your trust in what uh, uh, government officials say uh, I mean a couple uh, last month Biden talked about Afghanistan was going to be a piece of cake. Well, we found out last week that's not so. Uh, 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 you cannot trust in anybody like the Lord Jesus Christ. But can I say, in order to trust Him, you've got to get in the book and learn Him. Hmm? And see, we've raised up a generation of lazy Christians. And Brother Bob, we want all the benefits that God has for us, but we don't want to get in the book and find them. We want them to drop them out of the sky like raindrops. 
My dear friends, it doesn't work that way. The Bible says, draw nigh unto God, he'll draw nigh unto you. You want all of God? Give him all of you. We see the reliance of the psalmist. O Lord, my God, in thee do I put my trust. Notice his request, verse number 1. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Now, he's not asking to be saved in the sense of salvation. He's asking to be rescued, to be delivered from them that persecuted him. And can I say, whether or not you realize it, you have some who have you in the bullseyes. There are some that want to see your demise. There are some who want to see your defeat. Uh, there are some uh, who want to see you fall flat on your face. He has a request, Lord, deliver me. You know what? It might be good for you and I to every now and then ask the Lord to help us where we don't blow our testimony. Hmm? Lord, help me. Deliver me. We see his reliance. We see his request. Now notice the reason for his request. Look at verse 2. Lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces while there is none to deliver. He said, Lord, if you don't deliver me, I, I am subject to be torn into pieces from my enemy. Hmm? Can I say without the good hand of God, we'd be the same. Without the good grace of God, our enemy would run over us. Uh, we see the request. We see the reason for the request. We see his reliance. But notice his responsibility. I, I, I gain so much respect for the psalmist right here because he's definitely not a Baptist. Look at verse 3. He says, O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there be any iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, yea, I have delivered him, that without cause is mine enemy. Let the enemy persecute my soul and take it, yea, let him tread down my life upon the earth and let my, lay mine honor in the dust sail of. When's the last time you prayed like that? God, if I've done anybody wrong without cause, God, let them have their way with my life. No, we don't pray that way. That's not in our little lay me down to sleep prayer. That's not our little shopping list prayer. God, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need it now. That is a prayer of integrity. That is a, a man owning responsibility. That is a man saying, God, I'm asking you to deliver me. But God, if I've done something to bring this evil upon me, let the evil flow. Hmm. You see, when we start taking responsibility like that, we'll get God's attention. See, most Christians are like little baby birds. We're just sitting there in the nest with our mouth wide open wanting another, another goodie for mama. And that's all we treat God as. This man's praying a prayer that's getting God's attention. Now notice, if you will, the revealing. Look in verse number 6. He says, Arise, O Lord, in thine anger. Well, let me help you something. When you ask God to stand up in his anger, you better understand what you're asking for. You see, the Lord, he has fierce anger. Matter of fact, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. But he is asking for God to rise in his anger. He said, lift up thyself because of the rage of mine enemies, and awake for me to the judgment that thou hast commanded. Notice the revealing. He is asking God to rise in his anger, to lift up himself because of the rage of his enemies. And then notice what he says. And awake for me to the judgment that thou hast commanded. He says, wake up me to the judgment you've commanded for my life. You see, a lot of times we want God on the scene to do something for us, but when was the last time we asked God to wake us up to what he's already commanded for us to do? Hmm? I'm interested in that term arise or to appear or to show up 
And that's what he's asking. He's asking God to show up in the middle of his troubles. So I want to preach with God's help tonight on this thought. What causes God to arise or to show up to make an appearance on our behalf? Hmm? I sure do like it when he shows up in worship. I sure do like it when he shows up and speaks peace in the midst of my storms. I sure do like it when he shows up when I need assurance. But what will cause God to show up? I don't know about you, but you're going to need him to show up on your behalf from time to time. So what's it going to take for God to show up? Can I say this? First of all, God shows up for his commandments. Look again at verse number 6. He said this, uh, uh, Awake for me to the judgment that thou hast commanded. You know what gets God on the scene? His word. Can I say uh, he has magnified his word above his holy name. Uh, it is forever ever settled in heaven. Uh, and can I say uh, for his commandments God will show up. Uh, it's a good thing uh, uh, for you and I to know the commandments of God so when we talk to him... Uh, we start bringing them up, guess what? He'll show up. He shows up for his commandments. God's not going to let anybody trample his word. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that. Go read the last chapter of the book. He said it'd take people's names out of the book of life if they added or took away from his word. So when you start praying to God his commandments, he'll show up. Hmm? So many people pray such frivolous things. You know what's a good thing to learn to pray? The Word of God. Mm. Just pray the Scriptures. You'll get God's attention. Yeah. Matter of fact, when you pray a bunch of junk, God really don't care. But when you start telling God what God said, guess what? God shows up. Mm -hmm. mm. He shows up for His commandments. Can I say this? God shows up for His congregation. Look at verse number 7. Look at the Bible. The Bible says this, uh, So shall the congregation of the people compass thee about, for their sakes therefore return thou on high. Uh, he said for their sakes, uh, for the congregation's sake, uh, return. Can I help you with something? Uh, for you and I's sake, God shows up. Uh, 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 we may say we're undeserving. We may say that we're unlovable. We may say uh, we're the off scour of the world, but not in God's eyes. Uh, God has loved us with an everlasting love. Uh, and God looks at us as a royal priesthood, uh, a chosen generation. Uh, we are His children adopted into the family of God. Uh, uh, friend, what would you not do for your children in uh, an hour of need? Uh, uh, you would sacrifice anything to make certain your children children are taken care of. Uh, you would go without eating to make sure that they get to eat. Uh, uh, you would go without uh, uh, to make certain they're clothed uh, and have their primary needs. Uh, my dear friends, so would God. Uh, God would rend the heavens uh, uh, to make certain that you and I, uh, His children, uh, are provided for. Uh, he already bankrupt heaven to pay our sin debt. Uh, he'll show up for His congregation. Uh, can I say this? He'll show up for your peril. Was not the disciples uh, rowing in the third watch of the night, been out there for hours trying to get to the other side? Uh, 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 that was about an eight or nine mile journey. Uh, by boat uh, uh, wouldn't take very long to get to the other side but because the wind was boisterous and contrary to them because the waves were so strong uh, they rode for hours and thought there was no hope uh, and did not Jesus come walking on the water uh, uh, why uh, he showed up in the midst of their peril uh, how many times have you been in a situation uh, where it looked like there was no hope uh, and in that uh, hour when everybody else thought it was over. Uh, here came Jesus uh, walking by your way. Uh, hey, he shows up when you're in peril. Uh, can I say this? He shows up for your praise. And you're right, Brother Bob. Uh, hey, the psalmist in Psalm 22, 3 says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. He inhabits our praise. 
That means when we praise Him, He comes and sits down. Uh, he shows up for our praise. Uh, listen, the world don't praise Him. Uh, the world mocks Him. The world cusses Him. The world blasphemes Him. Uh, but when there's that little rat and tatted bunch, uh, that'll just say, Blessed be the Lord. Uh, uh, they just brag on Him uh, for what He's done and who He is. Uh, he just comes and sits down and hangs out for a little while. Uh, he shows up for their praise. Can, say, can I say this? He shows up for your prayers. In Revelation chapter 5, it says that there's vials filled with odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Every prayer you offer to God, He records and puts it in a vial. One of these days we get to glory, we'll get to see the prayers that we've offered to God. The psalmist down there about Psalms 58, 6, I think it is, uh, says, Put thou my tears in the bottle. Are they not in thy book? Uh, God records every tear that you've ever shed, my dear friend. He shows up for your prayers. He's intent to the prayer offered in this place. He listens for your voice, my dear friend. God shows up for His commandments. He shows up for His congregation. But He also shows up to consider. Look in verse number 8. The Bible says, The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to mine integrity that is in me. O oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. My defense is of God which saveth the, the upright in heart. Uh, God shows up to consider or to judge, my dear friends. Uh, he uh, is always keeping a record. Uh, make no mistake. Uh, and God's the one that makes a separation between the just and the unjust. Uh, between the saved uh, and the wicked, the lost without God. Uh, uh, what does God judge? Uh, my dear friends, He judges our moves or our actions. Uh, he judges uh, 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 what you and I do. Uh, he judges every work and every deed that we do. Uh, uh, can I say this? He judges our motives. Uh, he judges why we do what we do. Uh, there are some people that come to church... Uh, come to church uh, uh, to let people know they came to church. God's judging your motive. Uh, there are others that come to church to worship uh, and to pay homage and adoration to God. Uh, he judges their motives. Uh, there are some people that give a tithe and an offering uh, so they can tell everybody how much they gave. God's judging your motive. Uh, there are others that give a tithe and an offering because uh, they feel unworthy for how good God's been to them uh, and they want to give back to God uh, unreserved because God's been good to them. Uh, God's judging your motives. Uh, there are some that sing to be seen. God's judging their motives. Uh, there are some that sing uh, out of honor, praise unto God. Uh, God judges their motives. Uh, there are some that testify to hear themselves speak. Uh, 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 and God judges their motives. Uh, there are some that testify because uh, they can't help to tell how good God's been. Uh, God judges their motives. Uh, there are some that preach. Uh, uh, to impress people with their intellect. Uh, God judges their motives. Uh, they're some to preach uh, because they can't help but say what thus saith the Lord. Uh, God judges their motives. Uh, friends, uh, no matter what we do, uh, God's keeping a record uh, and He's keeping a record of why we do what we do. Uh, he judges the moves, the actions. He judges the motives uh, and He judges the methods. That widow gave two mites Pharisees didn't think too much of it, but she gave all she had. Some give out of what they can afford. Others give out of their abundance. Others just give it all. He judges your methods. Some do it because they can. Some do it because they realize they can't afford not to. God considers. He judges. Huh? Their old song, Consider the Lilies. Uh, God gave us an earthly application to consider the lily. He said, but one greater than Solomon's here than those lilies. Those lilies were, were, were Solomon wasn't arrayed in, in, in his glory. It wasn't as, couldn't compare to them, but he said, there's one greater than Solomon here. See, we're to consider some things. 
judge some things. Well, God's a considering. He's a judging. Hmm. Causes him to show up. Hmm. And I say this, God also shows up to convert. Look at verse 12. He said this. Well, I like verse 11. I didn't, I didn't read that, but let me read this because you need to underscore this verse right here. God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. You need to underscore that because your lost loved ones, your lost co-workers, your lost neighbors, every day God's angry with them. You ought to pray, you ought to witness, you ought to live before them a light that shows them the goodness of God because you don't want God angry with them no more. Hmm? But look at verse 12. It says, if he turn not. See, God shows up to convert, to turn the wicked into the righteous. Repentance is a turning point. Repentance is a change of heart and change of mind. Repentance is where you realize your life is meaningless and you're going to give Jesus a shot. And you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, God shows up to convert. He shows up to convert prodigals. Get them out of the hog pen and get them back to the Father's house. God's concerned about folks who aren't where they once were. By the way, you can sit on church pew and be a prodigal. You can sit there, nod your head, and say amen, but your heart's cold towards the things of God. God shows up to warm your heart back up. Hmm? Can I say this? He not only shows up, shows up to convert the prodigals, he shows up to concert, uh, convert the persecutors. Those that fight against the things of God and fight against the people of God. He shows up to convert them. It's... God's will that none should perish but that all should come to repentance he shows up to convert them so they don't deserve to be saved neither do you and I but he still shows up to convert them and God even saved Joe Biden but he's not a reprobate of course I don't know that Joe Biden has the faculties to understand the gospel hmm I say this, God shows up to convert the putrid, the most vilest offender. God still tasted death for them. God still loves them, and God will save them. He shows up to convert. And then I thought about this lastly. God shows up to chasten. Look again at verse number 12. He says, If he turn not, he, speaking of God, will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Listen, God's will that every man should repent. But if every man doesn't repent or any man doesn't repent, that man's going to face the judgment of God. He don't have to die and go to hell, but he's going to die and go to hell if he don't repent. Hmm? I'm here to tell you, God's angry with the wicked every day, and God will end their life if they cross his deadline of repentance one last time. Dr. J. Harold Smith preached that message years ago, God's three deadlines. What a powerful message. Friend, you'll call, cross God's deadline for the last time, and that's it. You'll not get saved when you want to get saved. You'll get saved when God's dealing with you. You'll die and go to hell. Hmm? God shows up to chase them. Now hear me and hear me well. God only chastens his children. He don't chasten the devil's children. They don't belong to him. Hebrews chapter 12 makes it very clear. For whom God loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth. God's not going to let you live however you want to and get away with it. 
you belong to God, He has set forth in this word how we're to live. And when you live according to the Bible, you'll have the blessings of God. But when you're disobedient, you'll face the chastisement of God. Just like your own children. If you're a parent that loved your children, you learn to chasten your children. I wouldn't give you a plug nickel for a mother or father that doesn't teach their children right from wrong. I won't give you a nickel for a mother or father that doesn't chasten their children. Well, I just can't I just can't bring myself to tell them no. Well, when they turn about 16, they're going to run, run your household. They're going to burn it to the ground, and don't come begging for my help. Hmm? We was in a church not long ago. I mean, the kids in that church ran rampant, running all over the building. I mean, just causing, just, they were terrorists. And I knew what Miss Nett was thinking. Yeah, I'd like to see them try that up in a manual. Because if the parents aren't going to straighten them out, the pastor will. You're not going to run all over God's house around here like that. We've had to do that a time or two. You can tell down there that's not the case. No? Listen, nobody likes to spank their children. Matter of fact, if you do it properly, it hurts mom and dad more than it hurts the child. But if you love them, you'll tell them no. If you love them, you'll teach them right from wrong. If you love them, you'll chasten them. The Bible's clear. You spare the rod, you spoil the child. Well, God, he spoils us with benefits and blessings, but trust me, he will chasten his children. Hebrews 12 goes on to say that if you're without chastisement, you're a bastard, not a son. Say, preacher, you shouldn't say that. That's what the Bible says. I'm here to tell you, somebody, Brother Tony, claims to be saved, and they live wickedly, year after year, day after day, never, ever, ever show any signs of remorse or repentance. They don't belong to God. If he doesn't chasten them, hmm, nothing ever happens to them. And by the way, just as you knew when your mama and daddy chastened you, you know when God's chastening you. Hmm? Can I say God only chastens his children? But he combats those who oppose his children. Those who are persecuting God's children, they've got to deal with God. And can I say this? And then he condemns those who refuse to repent. Mark her down. I sure do want God to show up. I've heard Brother Sidney Weaver tell this story. He was in middle school, and if you know Brother Sidney, he was about the same size in middle school as he is now, he says. And just like now, he was quick to pop off at the mouth. And Sidney will tell you his dad was an old head-busting police officer. Well, he was out on the playground, and this man showed up, and he said he was a man. Showed up throwing elbows and was going to, Lay one on Sidney. Well, Sidney knew one thing about his dad. That if Sidney went home with a black eye and told his dad he didn't defend himself, it would be a whole lot worse than taking one from this guy. So he made up his mind. He said, all right, big boy, let's see what you got. He said, the guy was going to kill me, but he said, I was not going to back down from this guy. He said, right as he's about ready to square off, he said he felt a hand on his shoulder. His daddy showed up. And that guy knew who Mr. Weaver was. He said, Mr. Weavers, I have no beef with you. I've got a beef with this young man right here. And Mr. Weaver said, but you don't understand that young man is my son. You've got a beef with him. You've got a beef with me. He said, what are you trying to say, preacher? I'm saying somebody got a beef with us. They've got a beef with God. Are you listening? Yeah. Hey, and just about the time it looks somebody's going to hit you with a fatal blow, he shows up uh, and he takes care of business. Are you listening? I'm glad he shows up. Shows up in our worship. Shows up in the midst of our storms. Shows up even when the enemy looks like they're going to overtake us. Go study your Bible at the Battle of Armageddon when it looks like Israel's going to be wiped off the face of the map. Guess who shows up? Him. And we're coming back with him. Are you listening? Revelation 19.6.
And can I say, they'll cry for the rocks to fall on them so they don't have to deal with them, but it's not going to happen. They're going to face him. So, friend, I said all to say this. We as God's people ought to be people of integrity. Before we ask for God to take care of anything for us, we need to ask God if we are in any position where he can take care of something for us. Or have we brought this on ourselves? Many times I've let you know, sometimes, we're guilty of being our own worst enemy. We're facing a lot of things we brought on ourselves. The psalmist asked God, if I'm the reason, let it come. But if not, God, will you deliver me? We've got to be people of integrity. But friend, never lose sight of the fact, God always shows up in our hour of need. You need him tonight? Have you asked him to show up? Have you pled for him to show up? Have you met the qualifications for him to show up? Are you willing to do what it takes for him to show up? Are you going to praise him? Are you going to pray and ask him to show up? Are you going to be faithful to whatever he's commanded so he can show up? See, it's like revival. We want all the benefits of revival without any cost. For him to show up, it'll cost you something. But when he steps into the midst of whatever you're facing, you'll be so glad you paid the cost. I wonder tonight, your heart got a little cold? You know why you need to keep your heart warm? Because you don't know what's around the next bend in your life. You may need God to show up. Hmm. When was the last time you faced something? And you needed God. I wonder, my dear friends, you willing to call on him, ask him to help you? You willing to do a little inventory and ask him, God, judge me, make sure I'm where I need to be? Guess what? You may need him to show up on behalf of one of your church family members. Can you get that prayer through? Hmm. How about when your persecutors come? Are you in a position where God will show up and defend you? I wonder. When's the last time you really gave any thought to needing God to show up? Don't wait till you're in the midst of the Sea of Galilee trying to get to the other side. Why don't you just walk with him every day? And then you don't have to worry about him showing up. Folks are coming. Let's all stand, Brother Clint. Come get your guitar. Now Maybe you need to come ask God to help you. Maybe you need to come and intercede on behalf of somebody else. Maybe you know somebody's lost and you need God to show up so they can get saved. Folks are coming. He's picking out a, a song. While they're doing that, let's pray. Father, we love you. God, quick, we're quick to ask you for things. Lord, we're not quick to think about what it cost. God, we're so glad for all the times you've showed up. And yes, Lord, we are undeserving. But we're so glad when you show up. Help us pay the cost. Help us to walk in the midst of thy commandments. Help us, Lord, to always uphold you in the midst of the congregation. God, we long to see you convert. God, do a work that only you can get the credit for. Lord, help our motives and our actions to be pleasing unto thee. God, get glory now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Folks are in this altar. Lord, whatever they're calling upon you for, I pray you'd show up and help them. God, speak to hearts, certainly if there's any amongst us unsaved, lost without God, God, I pray you'd save them. 
Well, thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.